If you're reading this label carefully, you'll notice that we're almost at the end of this series because this is episode number 32 and the label says there's only going to be 33 episodes. Well, I'm hoping I don't have to change the label. As I'm speaking here, I have now put six applications of the Wipe on Poly on the bowl. And I guess this episode is going to concern itself with making the label and finishing off the bowl. 33, well, I'll tell you at the end of this episode here what 33 is going to be about. Anyway, I had really good success making a mahogany wall clock about four years ago, and I made my own dial. Turned out really nice. And I'm going to use the same process for the label. Now it's been my experience that if I don't seal the paper, at least from the back, what happens is that the Envirotex that I'm going to mix up, which is a lot like epoxy glue, it's a two-part thing you're going to see, it soaks through and whatever you've got the uh, paper glued onto, and in this case it's going to be a piece of plywood, which I have found from experience, it's a good idea to paint it white first. Um, anyway, turns out it's uh, just over four years ago I did this. I checked my records and uh, I can't believe it's that long ago. It just seems like yesterday I was doing this. Where did that time go? Anyway, mix up a little bit of epoxy and smear it on the back here and yeah. Now this is just dollar store epoxy. Nothing special about it. Okay, I think I've got it. I can see the line all the way around there. Let that cure now and check it out in about half an hour. Now the last time I did this I was using a different printer and it almost looks like the ink ran here. But this is sort of water soluble ink and this is, I don't know, I, well I guess, yeah, I guess it's dry. Check it out. Oh boy. Well, I guess we're going to have to put up with it the way it is. Still readable. That's too bad. Well, I wonder how it'll be though if something light is underneath it. Let's just check here. Oh yeah, it might lighten up. If I paint this white. Disposable brush. So why am I showing you this? Well, right here is the end grain where those two boards butt together. Here's the line right here. Now I want you to notice that the uh, wipe on poly has completely filled the pores. I'm going to just move it just slightly so that you can actually see the reflection changing here. You should be able to notice that it is uh, com completely filled all the, all the pores.
I really don't think there's any use trying to apply any more applications of this wipe on poly. I've done approximately 10. I stopped counting after 6, uh, but I know I did it several times after that. Uh, probably 10 altogether. And uh, it's set overnight now. I think it's about as good as it's going to get. You know, it's not going to look any better, it's just going to get thicker, if you know what I mean. There's something I'd like to mention here, and that is that right now here in Winnipeg, we've been going down to about minus 30 every night. And my basement workshop is, uh, you wouldn't say it's cold, but it gets a little bit cool. So what I've been doing here is I've used an electric heater on low, and I've had it running pretty well constantly. Not only does it warm the air slightly, but it keeps the air circulating around that bowl. And I was able to put several coats on, uh, one after the other, oh, about three, four hours apart. It was amazing how fast this wipe on poly dries. Now, a uh, little point of interest here. You may have remembered I was saying that these things you can uh, wash out. Well, I did. I had used this one uh, in between coats here. And uh, it was getting pretty plugged up, and I was kind of concerned that it wouldn't wash out. But it did. It's almost like brand new again. Now this stuff should still be saturated from yesterday. Uh, by the way, it's the next morning. And all I want to do is try and have it so that the transition from bare wood to, you know, finished wood is not so noticeable. It doesn't have to have a whole bunch of uh, coats on here, just make it so it's the same color. I think this will work. Nobody's going to be seeing the center anyway. Now one of the viewers made a very smart comment. He said, make your nameplate so that it can be removed in case you ever want to put it back on the lathe. So rather than gluing the nameplate on, I'm going to uh, screw it on. Just a couple of screws. Smart idea. Okay, I think we got it. Now, this is garbage. Okay, I'm sure that you realize I'm just kidding around here. I'm not really flushing this stuff. I sanded this down slightly and gave it a second coat here, and it's dry. Now, you'll notice here that when I put the put this on over top of the white, it will uh, well, it's a lot more legible. However, I'm going to try an experiment here. I've printed out another one. I'm just wondering what would happen if I was to glue it to the white. I'm going to have to glue it anyway. I don't know. It, it might be better. It might not. It might be worse, too. Well, we'll soon know because that's what I'm going to do. I guess I don't need this anymore.
The reason I'm cleaning this stuff off is because I'm probably going to want to use it again. Maybe. Well, this actually might work better. I'll know in about 20 minutes. Now my plan is to just stay just on the outside of the line. And then I'll take it to the line with the disc sander. Once again, that's the plan. Now I know this is kind of curved like this, so more is going to be flowing off of this way than it is off this way. However, I want to try and keep my little platform here as level as I can. Now my experience with this stuff is that it's very difficult to mix up just a small amount accurately. I've mixed up two ounces here. That's actually way more than what I need. However, here we go. According to the manufacturer, I think I read some time ago that this is the equivalent of about 50 coats of polyurethane. Now there are little bubbles forming there and unfortunately I notice it's kind of darkening up here. That's too bad. Well, this is going to have to do. Now sometimes I can pop the bubbles by just passing a propane torch over it here.
Yeah, that worked really nice. And now that I think about it, that dark that I saw forming up here, that was actually a whole bunch of little micro bubbles. I'll wait about 10 minutes and I'll do it again. Just over 10 minutes has passed now. I'm not really seeing anything new here, in the way of bubbles that is. But we'll just give it the once over anyway. I think it's the uh, carbon monoxide that's in this thing that causes the bubbles to pop, but I'm not sure. Well, it's about a quarter after one now. I'll leave that for a while. I would say that by this evening it should be ready to handle. It takes about 90 minutes for it to get, you know, to the place where it's, you know, not going to stick on your fingers. You have about half an hour's working time with this stuff. Anyway, check it out later. Almost three hours has passed now. And I haven't checked it out yet. So, let's see what's going to happen here. It's uh, kind of the consistency of, well, very cold honey. I wouldn't be able to touch it now. If I was to try and touch it, I would leave a, it would stick to my finger. I don't remember this uh, setting up so slowly. Last time I remember using it, it seemed to me that it set up faster. I hope I got my ratios correct. Like I was saying before, it's pretty hard to do when you're mixing up just a small amount. However, I would think that by tomorrow morning, it should be okay. But in the meantime, there's something else I can do here. Now I had originally been planning on putting eight of these little pads on, but uh, clearly that wasn't going to work out. And the last one. We are almost done. I just have to wait for the label now. And uh, yeah, can't believe it. One more little short episode left. Now, one of the viewers asked me, he says, are you going to weigh it? Well, my bathroom scale isn't very accurate. So I am going to take it to the post office probably within the next two days. And they have accurate scales there and I'm sure they'll weigh it for me. How much do you think it weighs? Remember, it's very thick walled. Probably averages uh, an inch and a half thick all the way down. Well, maybe not quite. Well, in some places, yeah. Anyway, I, I can give you a hint, it's heavy. Guess, put it in the comments. And if you're way off, who cares? Just for the fun of it. Put down how much you think it weighs, and then in episode number 33, the conclusion, better be the conclusion, we'll see how much it weighs. I'll actually take the camera to the post office, so that you know there's no cheating. Anyway, we'll see you in episode 33. Thanks for watching. <laughs>